So you're very welcome to open your Bible. When John began writing to the church, he, he gave this testimony in the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 14. He said, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Think about yes, that. Amen. We beheld him. We saw Jesus. We saw him in his glory and in his power. In the book of Ephesians, the apostle Paul wrote of Christ and the magnitude of his glory. And in chapter four, verse seven through 10, he said, grace was given to us according to the measure of Christ's gift. When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. I think the church should say amen. amen. And gave gifts to men. Amen. He ascended above the heavens that he might fill all things. Hallelujah. Later, when John was on the Isle of Patmos for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. What that means is he was he was preaching Christ. He was magnifying the Lord. And as he did, people didn't like it. I, I think we're still in that kind of world today where if we're living for Jesus and manifesting the glory of Christ in our life to other people, a lot of people in the world are just not going to like it. Right. They want us to conform and transform to their ways. Yes. Well, while he was doing that, he was banned to the Isle of Patmos. And while he was there, somewhat it sounds to me in isolation. He was in the spirit quite frequently and the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, presented himself to John and John had a greater revelation of Jesus Christ. That is my opinion that when Jesus was walking with the disciples and this was when the gospel of John was written. John made this statement, and I believe that it was absolutely true. We beheld the glory of the Lord. And it must have been an awesome thing to see the miracles, the glory of the Lord that was revealed. Yes. But now John is on Patmos, and he is having the revelation of all revelations of Jesus Christ. And he sees the Lord as the resurrected Christ. And he sees him in his power. And if there, if there can be degrees of glory, and I think there are, he's seeing the Lord in his full glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he's writing to the churches, that means to us to, to, mm -hmm. to, to give this revelation, this testimony of Jesus Christ. We're going to be jumping around a little bit in the book of Revelation, but chapter 11, verse number 15 through 17. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet and there were loud voices shouting in heaven. The world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. My spirit has to say hallelujah. Yeah. Verse 16, the 24 elders sitting on their thrones before God fell with their faces to the ground and worshiped him. And they said, we give thanks to you, Lord God, the almighty, the one who is and who always was 
For now you have assumed your great power and have begun to reign. I again have to say hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah to the King of Kings. Thank you. It's important for us both now and eternally to know that Jesus Christ is the King of glory and that the Lord God Almighty reigns in power. The implications of this are really very powerful in our life. They, they impact, they're impactful in our lives and they're significant in everything that we do from day to day. That he has assumed or taken his power as some translations say. That he has assumed his power and has begun to reign is a testimony of his glory and his victory. You need to know today that the Lord has conquered the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. I believe all power belongs to him. Could I have an amen? amen. Revelation 19 and verse 6. It, it's one of those verses that I... I think every Christian ought to have this highlighted in their Bible. Revelation 19 and 6, it says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude and the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Those words that are in the darker or heavier print, would you say them out loud with me? Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. One more time, please. Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Now, I feel it rising in me just like I think it's going to be a resounding shout like the sound of mighty thunderings. When all of the believers all over the world get together and all of those in heaven get together and they begin to declare and shout together, Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. He is omnipotent in his power. Amen. When John was shown this impactful testimony of Jesus Christ, he was, he was revealing how it affects our lives individually. You need to know this, that because the Lord God omnipotent reigns, it affects the way that you live today. Right. It affects the adversary of your soul. It affects the victory that we have in this life. John saw the one who had been dead. But the Holy Spirit had quickened his dead body and now Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. 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 For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. I don't know if the Holy Spirit is doing anything in you this morning, but he's giving this testimony in my spirit that yes, the Lord God omnipotent reigns in power and in great glory. Glory to the name of the Lord. In this glorious vision that John had, he saw Jesus being crowned as the king of the kingdom of our God. And as he watched, Jesus' power and majesty fulfilled all of the glory of God. Let me try to explain that. Jesus, when you really see Jesus as he is, it's not a digression or a transgression of the word of God at all to say in Christ dwells all of the fullness of God. Amen. That's what the Bible tells us. Right. Now I do believe in the Trinity, don't get me wrong, but I believe that God has so invested his glory in Jesus Christ that it, when we behold Jesus, we get a glimpse of the glory and the power and the majesty of God in all of his fullness. Amen. Revelation 1 and verse 8, Jesus made the declaration. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. You need to know this this morning, that the Lord is almighty. Hallelujah. The Lord God almighty reigns. Give him praise this morning. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Revelation 1 and verse 17. Then Jesus said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever, forevermore. Yes. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Think about it a minute. When Jesus overcame the last enemy, and the Bible tells us the last enemy that will be destroyed is the enemy called death. When Jesus conquered death, he arose triumphant. Hallelujah. You need to know that Jesus is arisen. He is alive and he is alive in power. He has conquered your greatest enemies. Yes, he has. Glory to the name of the Lord. So when he says, I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and hell, that means that Jesus has authority and he has power and he has conquered. Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty, omnipotent reigns yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. on our Lord's coronation as King of Kings. The Bible tells us here, loud voices were heard in heaven. I believe that it is the jubilant praises of the angels, multitudes of angels the seraphim and the cherubim and, and the hosts of heaven. What, whatever the hosts of heaven are, I believe my personal conviction that it, it involves all of those saints that have been brought up into the presence of Almighty God. Here is, here is the image that I'm getting. It's not just hundreds of thousands. It's tens of thousands times tens of thousands and thousands and of thousands and thousands of thousands around about the throne of God. And they're all giving praise and glory. If you don't like to praise God, you're not going to be happy in heaven. Because when we get to heaven, heaven is going to be filled with the sound of people praising the Lord. And they're going to have this word, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Something begins happening within the host of believers when we start declaring Christ's victory. You see, Jesus' victory was not just for himself. When he conquered hell and the grave and, and death, he did it for you. Jesus didn't have to conquer it for himself. He did it for us. So that the victory that he has can be our victory. You need to know that, that he has done this so that you can have victory in your life. Victory over hell. Yes. Victory over death. Yes. Victory over the adversary. Yes. Victory over the principalities and powers. I think that we the church need to declare this. Verse 15 please. Revelation 11 and 15. It says... The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Yeah. And he will reign forever and ever. Verse 16. And the 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty. The one who is and who was because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. I believe that we need to declare this ourselves. The Lord reigns in power. Satan, you need to hear this. Principalities and powers need to hear this. Dear church folk, you need to hear this. The Lord reigns in power. You know what this means? is that Jesus is now the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. He is not just Lord in heaven. He is Lord over all. Yes, hallelujah. 
He has defeated the principalities and the powers. He has plundered and destroyed them. On the cross, Jesus did this. And then when he came out of the grave, Jesus came out in victory over hell. He had already conquered death and the grave. Victory is his, but it's for you, friends, that Jesus gained the victory. Amen. When Jesus went back to the Father in glory, he gave him a name, a name that is above every other name. And then the thing that is so important for us is the victory that Jesus has and the power that is represented in his name has been freely given to believers. Right. You, as part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, have been given the privilege to use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I would like for everyone in the house to say Jesus, would you? Jesus. Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus has the power. And when you start using the name of Jesus, everything that is behind the name of Jesus, both in heaven and in the kingdom of God, is represented in that. You know, when Jesus was on this earth, he gave his disciples authority to use his name. But there seems to me to be a greater power and a greater glory represented in the use of the name of Jesus since he has come out of the grave and has ascended to the Father. And that privilege that we have to speak and to use the name of Jesus brings to us that power of the King of glory. Jesus has been crowned King and Lord of all and all power of heaven, hallelujah, and on earth belongs to him. In the Old Testament, David blessed the Lord and he spoke of the glory and the majesty of God. In 1 Chronicles 29, 11, it says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours, O Lord. And this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. I think that's a good verse for the church today, don't you? Even though it's an Old Testament text, I believe that it reaches down into the church age and I believe it reverberates even through out eternity that the Lord God Almighty, the King of glory, He has all the power, all of the glory, all of the victory, and all of the majesty. We should praise Him. Yes, amen. Now Jesus is being revealed in all of that fullness and all of that greatness, power, victory, glory, and majesty. Col Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. It, the New King James said, For it pleased the Father that in him, that is Christ, all the fullness should dwell. A new translation, the NET says, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in the Son. I want you to think about that. That God, God the Father was not jealous to withhold his glory and power from his Son. It reminds me of relationships of a businessman. Let's say a multi-trillionaire. A billionaire doesn't work multi-trillionaire invests his whole kingdom estate finances to his son and he says i'm not worried about it at all he's my son i see the lord god almighty investing all of his glory it doesn't diminish god the father at all it doesn't diminish god the holy spirit at all but he has said, this is the one we want everyone to focus on. Put your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. All of the fullness dwells in him. When Paul had a vision of Christ as King and Lord of all, he spoke of Christ's exceeding greatness in Colossians 
chapter 1 and 16, he says, For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Then in Ephesians, he began telling believers that they may know and understand this greatness that is in Christ Jesus. And there's a reason why it's important for you to understand and look upon this. Listen to what he says. Verse 19 of chapter 1. He says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 21, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here is an invitation for the Holy Spirit to come and cause you to really know Jesus Christ. He's no longer a babe in a manger. I love Christmas time when we celebrate the birth of Christ. He's no longer the Nazarene. He's no longer meek and mild and lowly. He's no longer the Christ on the cross. He's, he's gone past that. He has assumed a position of, of honor and glory. He's no longer in agony and suffering. You are serving the Christ who is the arisen King of glory in power and great mind. He is the Lord God omnipotent who reigns. Amen. Now let's take this to Colossians 2 and 15. Disarming the rulers and authorities, he made a public disgrace of them, triumphing over them by the cross. What does that mean for us? I would, I would ask you briefly to think about the things that have come against you and against the church and against the body of believers for just a second. You need to know that Jesus Christ has conquered. When I think of principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world, I see a lot of people become uh, upset and, and uh, they feel depressed and overwhelmed at the things that they are facing in this life. You need to know more of Jesus Christ. You need to know more of his victory and of his power and of his life. We need to know of his spirit and his presence that is with the church. We need to know him in his glory and in his, in his authority. Because when we begin knowing that, something starts happening for the church. Yeah. Revelation 12 and 10. John said, I heard of a loud voice, a loud voice in heaven. I'll be, I'll be welcomed there. <laughs> now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accusers of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is the conquering king. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Would you slip a hand up and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. He is the conquering king. Yes, he, he sits on his throne in heaven in awesome power and glory with all of the hosts of heaven around him worshiping at his feet. God has bestowed upon Jesus Christ all of the powers of the Godhead. So Jesus has the authority to exercise the authority and the power of the Father. Think about it. He has the authority to exercise the authority of the whole Trinity. Jesus Christ is doing that not for his own benefit, but for the church. You see, King Jesus has bruised and defeated Satan. I, I think sometimes even we believers look at the adversary and the things that are coming against us and we have empowered them. 
But we need, instead of empowering those things that come against us, we need to see that Jesus has conquered. Yes, amen. And that he is conquering. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know sometimes the battles that we are facing, they seem relentless and sometimes we feel like we're not going to be able to persevere in this day but you need to know the Lord Jesus Christ has conquered and he has awesome power and glory so that you can conquer Amen. it's interesting to me that all of the powers of heaven and earth the universe is under his control we shouldn't be surprised at that because while Jesus was walking in his flesh during his incarnation, he was able to speak to the wind and the waves and they obeyed him. Now that he is in his position of authority and power, you need to know that even the spirit world must bow to him. It must bow to him. Don't get flustered and upset when you start coming against the kingdoms and the powers of this world. Don't lose hope when, when troubles and, and trials start coming. Lift up your heads, church. That's, I believe, what John is trying to tell believers is that the Lord God omnipotent reigns and because Jesus is on the throne, you can have victory in your life. Let's go back to the Old Testament one more time. Isaiah 40 and verse 15. Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. Verse 17. Before him all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. I want you to get a, the message here. You know, some people tremble at, at the nations and the powers and the kingdoms of this world. But the Lord God Almighty looks on these things and he says, you know, they're really insignificant in my mind. I, I, I want to tell you, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. We're, we're often too blinded to the fact that Jesus resides in glory right. and reigns in victory and in power. Friend, you need to know this today. My dear brother and sister, you need to know this today. And it's impactful in our life because the Lord reigns. There's something that's going to happen in us. I want you to see why it's so important. Maybe this will help us. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 16 says, But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Hold on just a minute. So we start seeing clearer. The veil is gone. So I'm starting to see something. Verse 18. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Do you see what the Holy Spirit, what God is really doing? When Jesus is exalted, when we start seeing Him for who He really is, here's what happened. It has an impact in my life. I am changed. More of who Jesus is begins to be revealed in me. More of His glory, more of His grace, more of His power becomes evident in my life. There's a transformation that starts taking place. I, I want you to see here in that last verse that it is, it is a gradual and continual thing. We come from one glory to the next glory, to the next glory. And the more that we see Jesus and the greater our revelation of who he is as King of kings and Lord of lords and the Lord omnipotent, it begins to impact me on the inside. I begin to realize I'm not weak. I'm not defeated. I am an overcomer because Jesus Christ is in me and he's working in me. Amen. 
I want you to watch how this affects us. 1 Peter 3 and verse 2. Verse 12, pardon me. 1 Peter 3 and 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Yes. And his ears are open to their prayers. Hallelujah. Every you. time that you pray. Hear me. Hear me, church. Every time you pray, the king of glory engages his eternal powers on your behalf. You didn't know you were so proud, powerful when you prayed. But every time you engage your faith in prayer, the Lord God Almighty says, that's my child. They're using my name. I'm invested in that. And he looks down on us. Hallelujah. His ears are open to our prayers. I don't know how the Lord does it, but I'm glad to tell you that he does do it. And all of the fullness of the Godhead is being used on our behalf. We're, we're, we're being brought into the kingdom of the Lord and his authority and the authority of his Christ. Jesus Christ is coming to your aid. The Lord of glory, the one who is omnipotent in his power, is coming to your aid. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we surrender to him, we are transformed out of the kingdom of this darkness. Here's what Satan wants to do and what your weak flesh will do to you. You will start saying, I'm, I'm just puny. I'm not powerful. I have no authority. But if you will listen to the King of glory, he wants to come into you and start transitioning you from what you were to what you are yes, amen. in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Here's what it does. Every satanic attempt to touch your life and destroy you should rise, raise up in us spiritual indignation that says, my Lord reigns over these powers in victory and majesty. He is omnipotent and I am coming out. I'm coming out in victory. Your children of the King of glory, hallelujah. You belong to him. You need to believe this. Do, let me ask you a few questions. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has a kingdom? Thank you, Jesus. Do you believe that he has dominion over his kingdom and over all? Yes, amen. Do you believe that he now reigns in power? Yes. Amen. Do you believe that he has all of the power of the Godhead in his heavenly body? And do you believe that he has overcome the devil and the forces of evil? Do you believe it? If you believe that, friends, it's going to affect you. You cannot stay as you were when you begin realizing what you have in Jesus Christ. Amen. If Jesus is the king, then he has all the power. And if he has all the power, the Lord has taken dominion and he is working. Hallelujah. I want to jump back to Psalms 99 verse 1. It says the Lord reigns. The nations tremble. He sits enthroned above the winged angels. The earth shakes. The Lord is elevated in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. The Lord is holy. He is holy. You need to know this, that the Lord reigns today. His armies are mighty and he's able to save. Some of you may know this, but some may not. The Lord is the Lord of hosts and he has hosts of angels, the armies of the Lord. Elisha saw that army of the Lord. Second Kings 6 and 17, he said, Behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire 
round about Elisha. Yeah. David saw the chariots of the Lord in Psalm 66 and 68 and verse 17. He said the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them. In Psalms 24 and 7, he says, lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Verse 9. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. And that verse ends with a sila, And that means stop and think about it. I think we need to stop and think about it. That the Lord our God is omnipotent. And he has conquered. He's in the midst of his people. He has promised that he would be with us. And victory is coming for us. Amen. You see the one who is in our midst. We looked at this a few weeks ago. He's not beaten down and destroyed. No. He's reigning in power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One verse more and we'll close. Isaiah 40 and 5. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. I want to tell you this right now. The Lord is encamping around about your house. You can take the implications, whatever that means. Your home, your family, your children. Right. He's, he's around. And I don't see him as one that has to get out all of these armories and all of these weapons. He is reigning in power. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. And he's camping around about us. Thank you, Jesus. You need to see this, dear friend, that with whatever it is that's going on in this world, there's victory in the Lord's grasp. He is conquering and he has conquered. Hallelujah. He is the redeemer. He is the savior. He is the healer. He is the provider. He is the soul, soul feeler. Hallelujah. He's come to your aid today. He is the king of glory. Would you do this with me right now? I think we can. Would you lift a hand up or two and just give him some thanks? Lord, I thank you that you have conquered and that you reign in power and in great glory and in great majesty. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to the name of the Lord. You are the Lord of victory. And you are in the midst of your people. Blessed be the name of the Lord.